represent to you the short box. Oh my god. Ooh. There we go. Strawberry Rita. Strawberry Rita. Yuck. Oh, I'm, oh, I didn't want to take a look at the um, the nutrition value. I know it's probably sugar and alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Sugar. And that's all I need. If alcohol, though, what's in it? Like just probably wine, right? I, I got it from a gas station. I think it's better if you don't ask these questions. <laughs> 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 it's like asking what's in a hot dog. Like, what are the ingredients? You don't want to know. Buttholes, noses, eyes. Yep. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> it's always yes. <laughs> Oh, man. Short Box Nation, mm. welcome to episode 239. I'm your host, Bader Milling. I got my right-hand man, Cesar Cordero. Is Recuperating. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you're recuperating, man. Uh, my allergies are killing me. Oh. Oof. Yes. That's usually the trade-off with these beautiful days. And, and real quick, mm. last but not least, I got Edmund Dance yes. out here. Uh, that's usually the trade-off with these like really beautiful days in Florida. Are we the allergy podcast now? What's happening? Ooh. This is the pollen cast. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's good. No, you think that's that's a, you think don't give them any ideas. <laughs> well, it's just us, so yeah, us three. So, you know, I got a bunch. That's going to be our bonus sounds. content, like <laughs> allergy talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, oh, God. I'm going to talk about nasa court or flow nays. Which do you like I'm better? Actually, I'm, I'm looking up right now. Is pollen cast the show? Pollen cast. That's a really good name. Oh, Ed. <laughs> come on, man. You that's the website? Okay. You got to get on this now. <laughs> That's really sweet. Uh, Patreon exclusive. Can we talk Park about up? something, please? Park Park saying, like, we're looking at the weather. You know, the weather channel's got like their, their pollen. All right, all right, all right. I'm about to kill someone. <laughs> oh, man. You need a uh, strawberry. Uh, sounds yep. like. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quenches my thirst <laughs> better than, uh, than oh. uh, Bud Strawberry. Straight up. If Rita's uh, reached out to sponsor us, I take it. I will take it, yeah. Definitely. Sure. Rita's, if you're listening. I will. The strawberry Rita is the official <laughs> yeah. drink of the Short Box <laughs> Podcast. Yeah, I'm loving C right now. beverage. You know, 60 is like <laughs> wild, man. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, it's so surly. <sighs> Short Box, is, it's been a really busy week. Uh, we had, of course, the Captain Marvel movie and podcast mm-hmm. event that took place at Sunrise Cinema this past Thursday. And we also had a chance to interview um, a Star Wars design and uh, star wars and many other uh franchises too uh legend colin cantwell uh early this oh, week at yeah. Comics. Okay. artist yeah yes. awesome uh so yeah we just wanted to give a chance to do a quick recap uh mainly because i was not able to get the audio from the podcast show so that's all on me um so i wanted to give a quick recap for those that weren't able to join us uh thursday night watching captain marvel um, and also just kind of uh, give you guys a heads up on some of the things that we got going on. I've been um, getting some messages asking, yo, when's the next live event? Are y'all doing Avengers and all that good stuff? So hopefully mm. we'll be able to answer it um, in this episode. Uh, per the usual, I want to give some shout outs. Um, I wasn't able to like really, you know, name drop everyone that was at the event the day of only because it was, you know, just worrying about the um, the show. But uh, I just wanted to kind of give us all a chance to maybe give a shout-out to some of the people that showed up. Oh. I know we, um, we yeah. gave uh, Darby a shout-out. Darby. Darby's Dungeon was there. Uh, I know Shaggy Black was there. Matt Stinson was there, Matt too. Matt Stinson was definitely there in, in short box gear, too. Corey. Corey, of oh. course. Always supporting yes, is course. awesome. Shout-out yeah. to Chris Milbro, too. Yes, man. I, I, and I, I did not give him a shout-out in front of uh, at Do it event. now, damn so, it. Yes, yes. Shout-out to Chris, man. Without him. Mark um, sent us some pictures. Yeah, Mark, Mark gave us oh, some yeah, pictures. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Chris handled uh, the videography, and now and I know he got some solid picks too. So I'm waiting on those. So always a big shout out to Chris. Uh, Tony A. Uppy was there, who I, who I just met like two weeks ago, and he's been like uh, heavy supporting us too. Mm. Uh, the Marvel OG was of course there. These guys all we all sound like we're in a gang, <laughs> like gangsters, you know. <laughs> hey, real quick. Like, hey, Tony Oppie was there. The OG was there. <laughs> Lots of people were there. Probably shout probably. outs to uh, shout outs to my grandma who makes the best sauce Johnny ever. Johnny the Fish hey, was there. Yo, hey, life not for the, nothing. Life yeah. was there. <laughs> Tony. Was was there Blythe Bar- Tony Adrian <laughs> Adrian <laughs> he's you know, uh, you know what I'm saying yo speaking about gangsta ass <laughs> nerdy people I, I was on uh, the comic book fiend club's Instagram and I noticed uh, they had a picture of some dude that got the tat the uh, comic book fiend club tat I'm like yo this is oh whoo thank god they're in our corner show the colors yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Run through uh, this world. <laughs> was there any? Um, the Hell's Angels. Tim comic Hollister. Book fans? <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, Tim. Sorry. Ray Hollister was there. Oh yeah, big, uh, yeah. Shout out to Ray. Big shout uh, out. Robert Zerb was there. He's um, a member of the the podcaster group. He he wanted to show up and give some support. So I, and I know he was there. Um, shout out to my boy Muhammad, man, who I hadn't seen in a long time, and he was like, "Hey, I just started listening to you guys." Um, so uh, if you're listening, Mo, shout out, brother. Yeah. 
and there's one more name I want to make sure I, I give a shout out because he brought um, uh, two of his homeboys and they were really impressed with the show too. Let me uh, pull it up. Uh, oh. Morgan, that's right. Morgan was there too. Oh, okay, and so. guess who we saw? Adam. Oh, yes. oh my oh, God! The return. Yo, the return of the wallet. Man. He's so wallet. smooth, man. He was like, "Hey, good job, guys." And, and then disappeared. The I was like, like right. slapping the butt real, psh, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> all smiles for me. <laughs> <laughs> was that just me? Okay. <laughs> so, man, uh, shout out to everyone that showed up. Um, to answer your question, yes, we are in talks of doing another live event um, mm-hmm. for Avengers Endgame. Uh, it is looking like right now it'll be at Sunray uh, Cinema. We've got to um, finalize that, but um, it'll probably be a one showing only that Thursday. So once again, I know the tickets for this Captain Marvel sold out um, You know, the, uh, two days prior to the event. I know Avengers will definitely sell oh, out yeah. a lot quicker definitely. as soon as those tickets are announced. So stay tuned to our social media. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll give some more information. April is going to be a busy month for us. I mean... Uh, Avengers Endgame, but also I want to go ahead and, and give you guys a, a, a heads up now. Saturday, April 13th, we're doing a live episode with our good friends at Straight Chillin'. It'll be a collaboration one. Mm. It'll be at Justice Pub downtown. It's a new bar that um, opened up a couple months ago by my man Ian, uh, the owner of uh, you know Nighthawks, uh, Rain Dogs, Shantytown Pub. So he's got some experience of opening up really rad uh, bars. So we'll be doing it that there, that Saturday. Uh, I think we all agreed that we are going to uh, do a spotlight on the comic book and movie Creep Show. So, oh, cool. Um, as soon as we figure out what's the, what the... Uh, is it one trade? Is it like one key it, story? It wasn't a comic book. <laughs> it wasn't a comic book. It was a movie. Yes, yeah, but there was an adaptation. There was an adaptation. adaptation. That's what I want. Yes. Okay. But right. there's only one adaptation we got to worry about. Correct. Well. Okay. So we'll go ahead and post that in case you want to read it along or watch the movie um, in time for that event. We'll have uh, more information there. You're doing so, this one, right? Creep Show one? Yeah, yeah. Just which one. one. Okay. That's the one with the... I always get them mixed up. Which, one, which stories are on so that one? So that one had the, uh, the crate. Okay. It had the birthday, uh, cake. birthday cake. Oh, it had awesome. The one, uh, awesome. Was it the... Uh, they sure creep up on you, and it's the, uh, the Ted Danson, Leslie Nielsen one. Yes. Was the... Um, the cockroach was, one is in that one. Oh, that's a great one. That's a, that's a great And, of course, movie. the Stephen King... Grass, meteor. Meteor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So the raft was the second one. The raft, dude. But there's, yeah. I mean, I always get them. They're all because there's. Do you, you like know. the second one? Yeah, I do too. Like a lot of people are like, because that the first one's so good, it's but so the much, second one's not bad. No, it's just it just had the the misfortune of being. Yeah, it's hard to you follow know, in the shadow of that yeah. first one. You, know, George Romero. I mean, mm-hmm. no, they're both great movies. Yeah, for sure. So we got that lined up for uh, April thirteenth. So. We'll keep you guys up to date, but that's just a quick heads up as some of the uh, live events. I want to go back to this Captain Marvel, man. There we go. Uh, oh just boy. for a recap wise, um, if you weren't there, we introduced ourselves at the beginning of the movie, came on afterwards for a longer um, uh, show at the end. We did trivia. Uh, shout outs to who do we have? Oh, RC was there at the show, too. We had RC, Shaggy, and first time we had, I, I had ever met um, Patty. Oh, yeah. Who was a contestant yeah. for our trivia. Yep. She ended up winning. Knocked it out the park. Yeah, she yeah. was cool. Um, yeah, she was really dope. Uh, so shout out to Patty if she's listening. Uh, we did trivia as well as... Who did we invite on... Uh, we invited who? Corey. No, we, we got Corey's opinion on Captain Marvel after we gave ours. Yep. And Patty. And Patty. And yeah. Patty's as well. Mm-hmm. So they both knocked it out. Um, as far as our reviews, it seemed like Ashley for sure really loved the movie. Mm-hmm. Really liked it. Um, and I was hoping that she'd be here. I wanted to see if she watched it again. She tends to watch the movies twice, uh, relatively quick, if she liked them. Um, I think amongst us three, how convenient, of course. <laughs> we were player haters' ball is in session. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. Absolutely Let me, let me make awesome. a little note right here to cue that outcast <laughs> or that Dave Chappelle skit right now. <laughs> dirty, dirty, so dirty. So it was convenient that us three are, are recording today because I think we might have had um, somewhat in the middle, if not the opposite opinion of Ashley. Uh, see, do you want to lead us off, man? And, oh, and great. Recap? I, I mean, I'll, re- I'll start it off. You start it off. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm asking this to recap mm-hmm. what your opinion was uh, the day of the show, if you remember it, and then if it changed any with having the movie settled in. Because I, I know for us, it was like immediate, you know, yeah. having to have the spotlight on our opinions and whatnot. So if it changed any these the last couple of days, uh, I checked Rotten Tomatoes, just, you know, put it out there. I think sitting at 71% for the critic review and then like 55% yeah. um, for audience score. And... 
my opinion on Thursday after watching it was that it was entertaining, but left a lot to be desired for me. Um, I didn't think that uh, Brie Larson really delivered the kind of charismatic um, hero that I had wanted from from a movie that you know was being pushed. A yeah. certain um, I don't, don't want to say agenda, but whatever agenda or attitude or, or groundbreaking kind of milestone that they were trying to complete. yeah it's, it's it was almost like hard to empathize with the character yes because it was i think you said it before we we got together you were reading some headlines mm-hmm. that she was almost like too overpowered so there's no sense of i mean you she know, was pretty powered before that kind of she got the limiter taken off of her she t- you know she's already still knocking people across the room and right. her hand side like literally yeah it's <laughs> like it's, and there's no and it's like even when she's a kid she's like she's just a badass the whole time you can't it's hard to relate to that yeah you know as a character so yeah. that's the that's the thing i i, I there was no I, growth yeah, yeah exactly There's they're no trying to grow and it's hard because it's like because if i think they've introduced her in the movies mm. as this kind of mm. stoic aloof you know badass character aloof has been like the word yeah, key word for me about <laughs> him <laughs> which is which i don't mind as a character but it's this should have been the movie to kind of see where we got to that point you know, like, and they try to do so much and use so many different like tropes in one movie, you know? Yes. Um, you know, this wasn't a movie about Carol Danvers. It was, it was no. a movie about Captain Marvel, but it was mainly about a character named Veers that I I don't think I really cared about, you know? It wasn't yeah. about Carol Danvers. Dude. I don't even think it they wasn't. called it was her about, Carol by much. This movie was... It's odd because this movie was strangely trying to play to some sort of political angle, but mm-hmm. it's Disney, Mm-hmm. You know, the ultimate sell your soul for money. Sure. And like, you know, that's that's what I find really interesting about this is that like everybody's like, yeah, this movie's got a powerful message and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not why they made the movie. Like you guys yeah, forget, exactly. like this isn't like an indie film mm-hmm. where they were trying to break down barriers and prove or, something like this. Or is, even like a documentary of right. a real person right. that breaks right. down right. barriers. Right, right. Like this, this, is a, <laughs> this is a comic book. To quote film. Ben Affleck in Jane Silent Bob Strikes Back. <laughs> fictional characters. We're, Fictional, fictional characters. characters. <laughs> do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Also, all the all the stuff they said totally wrong about yeah, women and fighter pilot. That no, in freaking World yeah. War before World War II, the military was basically contracting women pilots who were awesome. Who were mm-hmm. dude, you Botter, you and I, we did a Black History Month thing on uh, Mr. Bessie Coleman. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that. And she was freaking going to France, racing dudes over there, and they were like, "Sacre bleu, this lady, she is uh, super. <laughs> she is a uh, super, a uh, very fly individual. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, wine, bread, yeah. yeah. Oh. It was basically yeah. really good. So, like, you see, what I'm saying, but all that stuff there was thrown in there to basically like, you get it, guys, yeah, you get it. And I'm like, <sighs> you, I, you know, you know, you know, I like Blythe. You know, I'm about, to, but she was like, she said something interesting to me. She's like, but this is the kind of first movie where, like, hey, keep start, my mouth, <laughs> yeah. keep my name out your mouth. Where she was like, but she was like, I wonder how many people share the opinion where, like, this is like the first movie that's been making strides for positive female characters. I'm like, uh, did everybody forget about Alien, mm-hmm. Aliens, Terminator One, Terminator Two, sure. uh, Avatar, pretty yeah. much any and everything James Cameron has done, uh, like. Yeah. You can say Alita recently. Yes, Battle Angel Alita. Like, like I mean, it, all that stuff is out already, and people are just like, you didn't have to alienate one side or polarize yeah, exactly. people That's to create thing. it. Like now, now it's just kind of like that scene where she pulls her hand out and it's like, I don't have to prove anything to anyone, to you, or something like that. And it's just like, was that necessary? Like, <laughs> I will say, man, like, this this goes into my like anticlimactic, like just uncharismatic. Uh, vibe with the movie was even the ending. I was like, everyone saw it coming. What? Yeah, no, this you movie was punched the missile, and that was it. It was ridiculously <laughs> no, was badass, predictable. Yeah. It was so predictable. And I was like, yo, I didn't even. If, if you're only going to give me three minutes total of Ronan, don't even put him in here. Don't advertise oh. him as the main villain. <laughs> right. Get out of here. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, the, yeah, this was, ain't worth it. Like, every, <laughs> I'll be back. I'm sitting here watching this movie. Like, yo, every dude is bad. Like yeah. every guy, like and people are like, oh, you're. I, I've seen so many people online use these exact words. Well, this movie came out and all the ner- made all the ner- white nervous dude bros feel uh, insecure that they don't know anything. Blah blah. And I'm like, most, a lot of people in the theater we were in were all brothers, and they were saying shit like, I feel left out. <laughs> well, <laughs> like what? Like why? Why am I the bad guy? Like why is every dude in this movie either inept, 
incapable of solving problems or evil. Mm. Like, it's like, come on, man. Mm. I do want to highlight that uh, a shared statement that I heard at least, yeah, at least twice, if not three times, amongst three different uh, uh, women um, in the theater was, I think, Blythe, Patty, and then someone else had said it that they really enjoyed the kind of uh, female, um, or I'm sorry, the <sighs> whatever friendship or, or yeah. uh, friendship of um, what's her name? Monica was it Remy? What was the um, Rambo. Rambo? Rambo. Thank you. And Carol, like that, seemed to be a pretty big point for the the, the um, female audience. Well, that was, I guess, kind of tie her like humanity yeah. back together. Yeah. But I don't think it. It fell so flat. Worked. It just felt really. I flat. liked having the Monica in there just as a nod to. You yeah, know, Pulsar, Photon, sure. Captain Marvel. You right. know, that was yeah. really cool. And I thought they did that really well. Like yeah. the Marvel lore, you know, the Kree yeah. Scroll War. Uh, yeah, except binary. Marvel. The oh, Marvel reveal started, was like, like, yeah, that was kind of like, like a, one, yeah. let's just put aside that it's a girl. Who cares, right? Yeah. The whole time you weren't, you weren't Marvel. Like you weren't a badass like warrior who was like fighting yeah. the Maria the, Rambo, sorry, like Maria. fighting in in the universe. And no, nope, you were just a nerd ass scientist hiding, trying to hiding. come up with a way to help uh, <laughs> shapeshifters. That, who, that's my. <laughs> That's like, my I'm like, thing, man. Like, f- you yeah. did, they did Marvel wrong. Like, I don't even Big care time. if it was Annette Benning. And I this love is Annette like, Benning. this is one of the yeah. few times that I get. Yeah, she could have been Marvel. Exactly. And that's fine. Exactly. She, she could have not been. some yes, scientist. Exactly. Yeah. She could have. Ex- and that's my bigger problem. It's yeah. not because they they uh, swap the genders. Wh- whatever. That's that's, that's fine. It's a movie. Yeah. Dude, this is the movie universe. But it's like, yo, you gave her the name of like this yeah. very cherished. Hero amongst like with comic a history. Book fans, yeah, yeah with, with history. history. I'm telling that. you, yeah. like that's why that's why I'm saying like you could have named people, her anything else. Like yeah. people, <laughs> pre scientist B. Yeah. <laughs> people, are, uh, th- this movie are this movie is being lauded for making political strides in one way or the other. When in reality, they're just kind of forgetting the essence of the characters at the expense mm-hmm. of the characters too. Because yeah. like, okay, what else? There was something else about Marvel. I was like, oh no, I can't believe it. It doesn't sound like none of our opinions changed over the well, three days. Yeah. No. <laughs> because it's... Look, nah. when, when you get down to it, is it a bad movie? I've seen worse movies. No, I'm it's not, not a bad say, movie. It's not, not a bad all. movie. It's a good way to kill some time. And if I was a little girl, or if I had a little girl, or, you know, take my niece, that's, absolutely. That's the thing, like, too. It's like that perspective seeing... Yeah. Because there's not a lot of representation as a lead character. Yeah. So we see, you know, like... Even in you know Alien and things like that, they're almost a secondary character to the you know yeah. Alien, right? But this is you know from that perspective, I get it. Like one of my favorite scenes, I, f- I didn't mention it at the the show, but it's like when that does when she's getting up and it flashes back to all the yeah, that's a great scene, beautiful scene, yeah, beautiful, it's very well edited. Yeah, it, it felt like a Nike commercial. Yeah, it's like, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, like was, that was the most but like it, uh, it was like, a commercial, the most motivated motiv- commercial, but it was definitely the most motivating but scene. But if you're like, like a young, I mean, that's gonna be like yeah, yeah fuck forever. yeah, you know, that's like yeah. yeah. So I, that's that's such a great moment, you know, even though it is yeah. Like I said, I it, it just took forever to get to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was think, like, "There's such a slow middle." I'm like, "Thank God for Telos the Scroll and oh, Nick God. Fury." Well, like, the thing is, God. I think I yeah. think the problem is is that uh, I don't I don't want to be called a toxic 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 masculine <laughs> dude or a bro dude or whatever because yeah. I this think the, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Do you want to know why? Because no, when I read comics when I was little, I didn't read it in terms of guys and girls. Mm-hmm. Like if there was a cool character, they were a cool character. Just like your dad who isn't out there. He's like, a, your dad is, I, I love him. And he's very, very, very strong with his opinions. Mm-hmm. It doesn't bother him politically what color steve rogers is you know yeah. but when they start it's just when you change the lore because for the most part most comic book fans are ridiculously progressive mm-hmm. like because they grew up reading stories where like different colored people were were like solving problems and were heroes yeah and different genders were doing like everything together like the god for god's sakes look at the x-men mm-hmm. in the 60s there's like girls on the team there's yeah. freaking girl superheroes back in the day so like when all these movies are coming out now and guys are like, why did you make Marvel a girl? Mm-hmm. People, those people are now being ostracized by other nerds. Like, oh, you fucking toxic masculine well, piece of shit. And it's like, no, it's not even that. It's it's not even. I she mean, wasn't it's, cool. You changed, it's yeah. not even like the gender thing. But if they it's made saying. her. They, Marvel, they did exactly Captain, they, with the full power. As soon full, as you compromise the yeah. essence of the character, you yeah. are in trouble. Yeah, you are in deep trouble. 
that's, with, that's what I'm trying to get. Especially with these, like you know, when they're when they're getting these deeper cut characters that don't have that like Batman, Superman, sure. where everybody everybody they're not household names. They're not household names. Yeah, and you can kind of play around with that, you know, the lore and the origins and stuff like that. Just, but just keep it. I don't, you know, if if she was Captain Marvel as Annette Bening, like shooting photon black, awesome. Yeah, it's Captain Marvel. The haircut's there, like I said, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, see, there was something that you said when we were leaving the theater and we were walking with Life and, and Chris, and Chris brought up, you know, his daughter was really excited about seeing it, and I was like, man, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, kind of to your point, Ed. Um, and just hearing some of the things that, like, Blythe was saying, uh, Patty had brought up, and, and some of the other individuals, and I started to think, like, maybe this movie wasn't geared for me. Maybe I shouldn't be mad that it's... I, I, I see you shaking your head. And, you know, I'm thinking, like, maybe I shouldn't be mad that I didn't enjoy it. Well, you it. just if, have to, like... Look at it from another perspective to see like and, what they and would I'm, think. And I'm know? trying to. And yes, yeah. I, I, I respect it. But we can still but, have our opinions. But see, on. made a good point where he's like, "Well, everyone should be included." You know, I should yeah. have still like left. Like, oh man, I because was... I think Wonder Woman did a better job. Wonder Woman did a way better job yeah. of that. And you know, they were. I feel like their rollout or their messaging with it being such mm-hmm. a, a big, um, a, a big deal was a lot more elegant. It was like well, a little classy. Thing. Here's the thing is that Wonder know. Woman wasn't about we're trying to we're trying to put a political message out there. It yeah. was, it it was about someone who is trying to figure out who they are. Yeah. Like you have two movies, right? Where they the characters are almost identical in that they're both trying to find their identity, right? Mm-hmm. Here's what Wonder Woman did right. Um they grounded the character in relatability. Mm-hmm. And they they cast someone who could relate and make jokes and have fun with the secondary lead, right? Yeah. Chris Pine is a great actor and he is able to like bounce off a of Gal Gadot, even if she's, you know, kind of the has the acting equivalent of like a Schwarzenegger, you know, who's charming but, you know, not really known for being a great actor or she's actress. She's strange because like remember I, I remember I had like the opinion it was like even like Patty Jenkins was like, really this model yeah. Fast and the Furious model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she there's something there's something that there. you can't teach. You just like there's like a even like Charm. when you watch, yeah, it's like she's a charming. charisma that you can't teach or you can't coach. Yeah. Like even in Justice League, when she's on the screen, it's like your your attention's there. Oh yeah. You know? So you got and that. it's not just because she's you know a, you know a beautiful woman. It's sure. just There's a there's nah, a charisma about her. Exactly. Right. It's just so that's one example of how you f- tell the same story. Mm-hmm. You know, someone who's trying to figure out who they are. You know, it's almost the exact same thing. Like, and it's oh, like there's that spoiler out of water. Yeah, I don't too. know that. You know, exactly. Like, it's it's almost like they were trying to emulate Wonder Woman, but they got too wrapped up in the politics yeah. and they forgot all about character. Yeah, and you end up watching a movie that boom, bow, shiny lights, cool special effects, mm-hmm. interesting bad guys. That will sell the movie, but when it comes down to it, it's not. It doesn't stand up. I think yeah. this movie won't stand the test of time. I mean, people will try and, you know, plant their political flag on this. I I just thought it was a terrible movie. And also, don't make me say it, guys. It's a Marvel movie, right? <laughs> it's a Marvel movie. I love Marvel movies. They're fun, but are but they... But there's re- a formula. Yeah. Are they really movies, per se? No, they're serials. They're serials. serials. Mm-hmm. It's episodic. It's, it's Netflix on the big screen. So... Yeah. Do I really give a crap about this movie one way or the other? No, because in my opinion, M. Night Shyamalan dropped the mic with lasting stakes superhero movies, but that's just me. <laughs> Ed, I do think, uh, I, I do like your theory or suggestion that if they had sprinkled her in throughout some of the movies and kind of made me yeah, cause invested early on. Also, fuck you, Captain America is the first Avenger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who's going to be Captain Ooh. when they say Captain? Oh, yuck. That'd be a cool be, scene. Hey, Captain. Gonna, what? What? Yuck. <laughs> Photon beam <laughs> to the face. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, she was, the thing, like, she it was, was like, fucking some dudes up. Do you see what and I'm she saying? she could take a punch, too. They're contradicting, yeah. though. Yeah. They're contradicting it. Like, it's like, ah, uh, Avenger. Oh, that comes from this. That was, was a bit like, forced. That ugh. was a bit for. I mean, okay. Ugh. We get it. We She's it's a bad... We get it. We get it. <laughs> you know, she's the... Yeah. It's... They're putting a lot on this character's shoulders, and then, yeah, it, yeah. Because, like I said, if we had her kind of make a cameo, or even mentioned, or even like in <laughs> Guardians, and then if this movie would kind of see that struggle to become this character, and then well, the Kree, we can't have an Adam Warlock. He's still fucking off in that cocoon. We can't have him. <laughs> we can't have him because he has a dick. So. Well, <laughs> can't have him. Did, this is why Tim was asking I'm, if we were going to have a female on our I'm, panel. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. I'm, it has more I'm to do kidding. with the... Like, well, you know what I'm talking I, about. I'm yeah. only thinking... Because I'm... 
I'm not, unless they've said something and I didn't read it yet, I'm not writing that off because what we've learned over the last 10 years or so, Gross. they've been doing this. It's that they usually pay these Easter eggs off. There's usually, mm-hmm. like, I'm still thinking, are we going to see the Living Tribunal? Uh, what about Howard the Duck? That hasn't been paid off. Well, <laughs> what's he going to do? Yeah, I think, it, I think we got it, the payoff. What is, he's he's that's fucking the doing pay- Howard the Duck the- <laughs> He's drinking and being at the hooker bars. Him and Goose are going to have a buddy cop movie. <laughs> and like, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's... How hard did you go home and hug your cats? I'm sorry. Oh, I, love, I wanted to inject her with some your- Cree science Whoa, and just well, get her... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> See, did you do normal cat loving? <laughs> my cat, my cat's cool. Well, your cat's like an, the same kind of cat, right? Orange yeah, tabby. Orange tabby. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I need to inject some. I need some Cree science. <laughs> Get some of those tentacles. genetic manipulation. <laughs> Terrigen mist sprayed in her face. <laughs> <laughs> she ended up going to a fucking coma like Adam Warlock. Yeah. I swear to God, they're going to explode. We're going to have awesome they powers. They better not try to. They better not try to shoehorn this Adam Warlock. And in, in well, I'm still expecting the Living Tribunal since they mentioned it in Doctor Strange. So how about? Because I, I was I was driving and I kind of had this epiphany that all the complaints I have with the Marvel movies right now are more or less as a result of Disney owning them. Mm. And that no one is ever going to do their own thing as far as a Marvel property is concerned. And maybe that's not... It's both a good and a bad thing, right? It's good because you get a single, you know, single unified vision, vision towards yeah. the future mm-hmm. where all the, all the characters are in the same world and they interact with each other. But at the same time, it's going to be carbon copy, psh, mass produced, psh, freaking mm-hmm. get the toys out, psh, plastic. Oh, sure. psh, it's all of that, yeah. you know? like, And it's never going to have any... But what franchise this big doesn't suffer from? Hold on, hold on. I'm not. I don't care about franchises. I want movies, dude. Fuck franchises. (laughs) I mean, the first Batman movie was done by Tim Burton, Mm -hmm. and he produced the second. Well, yeah, he did the second one, and then after that, it was just kind of like, all right, I'm bugging out because there's really no other story left to tell here Mm. in this world. But Warner Brothers didn't want to hear that shit, so they hired Joel Schumacher, which is like, say what you want. Um, It's it's different. (laughs) It's different. Um, I don't really like it. It's not for me. <laughs> but I would much rather live in a world where there's differences and there's all kinds of weirdness and bad stuff. So that way, when the good shit comes along, it's <laughs> way more obvious. Like you won't it's... get, you couldn't get Christopher Nolan to direct a Marvel movie because he's going to be like, well, I want to do my version of what I think this character is. And I'll tell yeah. you right now, it might be really, really good and better than anything we've ever seen. But because it's a franchise. We're never gonna. We're never gonna see it. Kevin Huggy would pop his hands so damn hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, they ran off like you know, James Dunn for some tweet he made. Yeah, years ago. Like seriously, so. like you didn't know he That's, worked at Trauma, uh, and also yeah, wasn't Robert Trauma. Downey Jr. the linchpin in your damn tent pole? Yeah, uh, Rob breaking into houses and like sure doing checkered meth. past. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't yes. want to open this. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, the oh, point okay. I'm trying to make is that this is a Disney movie. When it comes down to it, in my opinion, like it's always Marvel. I'm never going to see the artistic credibility it once had. It's always going to be a Disney movie. Just like these Disney princess movies come out on DVD, there is no difference between that (laughs) and the Marvel Universe. It's hard to say because it's like, in one hand, like I I see what you're saying, but then there's a, through time, these movies, good or bad, they have a reverence, a level of reverence to the source material that a lot of movies before haven't. Oh, d- sure, you know, sure. Like yeah. Tim Burton's Batman, we loved it. Right. But, you know, it's like, oh, it's, but that's, that's about as close as we're going to get, and that's Tim Burton's weird version of Batman. But it's and, a movie. It's not, yeah. it doesn't, it's not the source material. Yeah. Like, I know it's a different medium, but yeah. I think it's like, it, and it's weird because it's like, what do we want? You know, <laughs> what would be the ideal movie a for movie. us? A movie. A standalone movie. Because, like, piece what of do you art. think, like, Logan? That's like that's a, a great a movie, vision, yeah. And it's not any kind of real comic book lore it goes from, but it has like that the western elements. Yes, it has, you know. It's, yes, it's a very something like well that movie. could not be made in the Marvel universe. No, that's that's, that's the, the thing that we're going to miss. And like Fox with their hits and misses, their history of hits and misses. Yet we won't get that kind of unique perspective. But it, 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 and it's hard because like if you go too far that way, people are going to bitch. If you go too far, yeah. like you're saying, yeah. so it's yeah. like, what do we want? And it, this is a personal thing, you know? You know and, and of course, it's, yeah, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's the same thing with the Star Wars. It's like when, you know, Force Awakens comes out, it's like, 
It's just like the original ones. And is, well, is that what you fucking wanted? <laughs> when, the, when the prequels came out, it is what the fuck do you want? Mm, yeah. So, damned but, if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's, I'd be hella surprised if this... What is it? Are we on phase two, phase four? Of was, what? Uh, the, uh, after Way more than that. Okay. Three I, I, or four. Yeah. Uh, I whatever. Four. I think it's four. Whatever the next <laughs> you know, uh, phase is, it'd be pretty wild if they started to say, okay... Let's start picking Isn't, some of these random characters, random stories. That's what movies that don't connect. I remember reading sort of something like the, where the Star Wars like offshoots. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, Han Solo. Yeah, movie, we see how good ho- that did. Well, hopefully, better. <laughs> hopefully, they'll execute it a little better. <laughs> I'm. Th- I remember reading somewhere. I'm not sure if I'm remembering it right, but he is saying like after this, the end game, it's going to be more individual movies rather than I mean I won't know because I'm not going to watch them so well, <laughs> after Endgame I'm done we really should have we should have like a little uh, run and pole <laughs> you're going to watch them bet. I mean only because I'm on the show <laughs> oh there goes a loophole you do it for your it's you have to do it for your job <laughs> yeah <laughs> seriously will be the only reason why I watch Marvel movies Lord. I do want to open it up if you have a different opinion or if you had a chance to watch the movie and you want to chime oh, in oh just really quick I know it means ap- from what we talked about but I thought it was kind of cool Ronan with his old school green right. outfit That's right neat and he didn't yeah. have the makeup neither I was wondering what threw me yeah. off. Have the, uh, I'm guessing the if sweet. Kree all wears green and then he's wor- do you have to wear like colors if you work for Thanos well, I, you have I to think rock he's purple a, well he's the uh, in, like an inquisitor right like the maybe he's yeah, Fusers. like he just got higher up in that weird religious hierarchy they have. Maybe, no, but when he's in Guardians, then. he's working for Thanos. He's not in the Kree force anymore, so he's wearing Thanos colors, purple. <laughs> Thanos makes you wear purple. <laughs> when he, he wearing purple, his... I thought he was wearing like green still. No, in Guardians, he's all purple, purple and black. I drew him. I just remember because I was like, oh, what's this guy look like? Why is he green here in purple? Oh. Damn, I, don't, been a hot I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't just I try don't... to forget those movies. I don't Guardians? remember. Uh, you didn't like Guardians? I like Guardians. It's all okay. right. All right. But again, wow. that's that's again like uh, Marvel doesn't oh, damn it, man. Fuck. <laughs> it's frustrating because huh? you're like happy that these characters are hitting the big yeah. screen, you know? It's frustrating. Yeah. Because you're like, damn, if I didn't if Iron Man doesn't look awesome flying around up mm-hmm. there and oh man, look at Spider Man doing everything a spider does, you know? Mm-hmm. It's great. But at the same time, it's like it's <laughs> it's not He's in some weird like. It's never gonna end. It's no. never gonna end. It's like comics. No, it's never ends. Than that it's never different ends. Than that. I, I, okay, comics. <laughs> He's in some the weird set- dark green for the record, like some weird super dark green. Some the setup, the setup in comics is that okay. it's a seri- It was meant to be a serialized, cheap form of entertainment printed on really cheap paper. Mm-hmm. That that's fine. It was set yeah. up that way. Film was actually like, hey, these are moving pictures, and it had a, more of a foundation in art sure. than it did in entertainment. You know. So it's kind of like that's – I'm not trying to be, sound that way, but that's where I'm at right now. Like if I'm going to watch a movie, I want to see something that makes me think, that challenges me. Sure. Um, there's nothing like that in the Marvel Universe. No. <laughs> nothing. But like you said, that's like Disney's – It's Disney. popcorn movies. Exactly. All it, it's all yeah. they do. Yeah. Sure. So I don't expect anything – I don't expect any no. worse or any better like from Disney. Movies, so. You guys did a really good job of selling it at the at the live show for the record. I, well, we didn't, I, say, I know, I didn't, I know, we didn't change okay, our opinion. Okay. I still think Brie well, Larson is, Brie Larson is yeah, charming. Super, She's fun to watch. Super nice. She's just <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie. Like the whole time, I was like, "Yo, I feel like my opinion right now is like kind of cutthroat and unpopular." Well, you guys did a fantastic I, job. And it's and what it's did we say that was different? From no, right I, now? I, I'm, I'm joking. With yeah, you. well, we're elaborating more. Yeah. yeah, well, it's and like I said, I, I say we say all this. And at least for me, it's like I, I didn't. I l- enjoyed watching it. I mean, it's not like it's, you know, I'm upset that I watched it you know I watched no, the movie no. it's just there's things you know as fans and as people who know this history there's things that you scratch your head and even just in that MCU storytelling where why is this kind of you know 30 days before you know the last chapter of this you know well, 10 year storyline let me and all the all the griping that I've done let me let me submit yeah. something that could have made the movie better you know so that way I'm not just like ah this is shit Mm-hmm. And complete, you know, uh, <laughs> this is candy wrapped in a neat little wrapper. Um, if they would have dropped the fucking politics, throw that shit out the window. There's a couple of yeah, um, groaners for sure. and yeah. A lot of groaners. Yeah. Um, concentrate more on the aesthetic of the movie. We're like, they do the whole fish out of water thing. Mm-hmm. We're like... They they almost had it like they almost yeah. had it where it was like almost like a, a two gunslingers fighting each other right like it's mm-hmm. like 
they come to a small town and then they have to, you know, there's other things at work, you know, there's like, it, it was almost a space Western. Almost, yeah. it could have been a really cool, badass no, space there's, western. There's no threat. And then exactly, none of the uh, there was no bad guys. Like the scrolls yeah. weren't a threat. The antagonists like, were Jude lame. Law wasn't the threat. Yeah, you know, by far not a threat. No, yeah. could have sneezed yeah. on him. I did like that she blasted him across the room. That was pretty. Funny. It was fun to see. Yeah, fun yeah. to see. But, but yeah, that's it, who was who was the threat? No one. Yeah. And that's the that's the issue with a lot of these kind of origin movies. Is like they're not threats. They're not real, real threats. They're kind of henchmen's to get to the bigger threat yeah. that's going to come. Three or four movies down the road. Imagine that. No lasting stakes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I could, have, but, I, could have, I could have done with more of the like space western, which sure. what they did at the end, right down to two people like walking towards each other the in the desert. Yeah, in the desert. desert you mm-hmm. know? Like mm. it was like all there. And then it was just like, <laughs> they shit yeah. the bed. Yeah. Whew. And what just, is that player hater, Paul? Well, <laughs> 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 yeah. It's, but I do like, you know, just I thought... And all that, I did think that they did have a good back and forth, and I kind of like would have liked to see more of the scrolls because I liked how they looked and I like how they oh man changed yeah, they, shift, they and they just kind it. of didn't really use that as much as they could have, you know. And I was waiting I, for him to become a file cabinet. I was yeah. like, yeah, that'd be a great <laughs> to pay off. He was, yeah, he was great, and I then killed it. Yeah, they had. I think they had a really good Samuel Jackson actually got to play you know diversify his you know kind of be a funnier a funnier character oh, yeah. Yeah. you know not just pointing at stuff i and think like, honestly i think the best way they could have done this movie oh, good goodness probably the, i think one of the most coolest movies i've ever seen where there was a female lead where i didn't felt like i was getting preached to but she was badass was silence of the lambs Oh, Silence of the Lambs is like one of the best movies out there and everybody forgets about that shit. Yeah. And you could have had it to where like, you know, maybe Jude Law could have played a Hannibal Lecter type dude who was like her mentor, you know, and he's just like, oh, you want my help now, blah, blah. And then yeah. now you have somebody who's dealing with the bureaucracy, you know, the system. It's not just, oh, men. It's like men in the system. And then you can get like, oh, shit, like this is fucked up no matter where you stand, you know, like this is crazy. And then she ends up having a showdown with another bad guy who is crazier than the person she's getting notes from you know like it's the intelligence could have been exactly like why didn't that happen you know like there's so many things they could have done and so many models that already exist that they could use you Mm -hmm. know it's not like disney's above stealing shit you know like (laughs) they they could have used it they could have so Uh. it's like i watch this movie and i'm like you you could have made the movie that you're trying to champion right now and it wasn't made, and fuck you for not making it. <laughs> they could have doubled down on that um, that last portion of her uh, defeating Ronan. I wouldn't have minded to see like a full out interstellar, like or inner. Sp- I'm sorry, space uh, battle, especially with like it this. being kind of primarily on the Korean Scroll War. The thing, it's a more, even though it was pretty big, <clears throat> a, a bigger demonstration of her. If if we're already at this point, a bigger demonstration of her powers. That way, now going into Endgame, you're like, okay. There's a there's a shot here now, you know you don't you don't really see that until the very 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 last pretty much the last scene of the movie. Yeah, hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna open it up to uh, our listeners if they've seen it. I want to hear some opinions uh, if you agree or disagree. Like if you were a girl and you had a choice to watch a movie like Silence it, of the Lambs or The Shape of Water or Atomic Blonde or this movie, like what would you pick? You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, Batter, shut up. It's shut up. A, I was going to say it. Or Sucker Punch. <laughs> oh, what the? Okay, I'm sorry. I had to break the tension. And there goes the credibility of this show. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to Short Box. Or like Kill Bill. God, Ooh. Kill Bill. You know, like, yeah. it could have been Kill Bill-ish. Yeah. Because she was like, kind of like trying to figure out who she was in a certain way. But that's way, the you know? movie that she's, you see her as a badass from the most of the part. So, but she's vulnerable. It does, yep. There's a vulnerability. And not saying that they have to cry and be sad, you know, but there's got to be. No, you got to relate. Emotion. You got to relate to the character. Yeah, they can't yeah. be a damn robot. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. And that is a very. Awesome. That's the very. And I, I don't mind her being kind of like a robot after the Cree training and after right. all that. Mm-hmm. But we got to see how you got there. She figured out the plot like 
midway through exactly. the movie. At that point, I was she like, was like when she wrecked her go kart, she figured it out. It's like, yeah, I'm badass. As soon as she figured out, <laughs> well, it was more so when she figured out, oh, I'm Carol Danvers. You guys tricked me. I was yeah, like, all right, yeah. Well, as soon as that what, happened, now roll credits. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, well, yeah, roll credits. We're yeah, done. But then you go back to the training with you know, Pai Mei. You go back to you know the scenes oh, with um, uh, Hattori Bill, Hanzo too. Hattori Hanzo. There's. It's just. It's just not a... It, it was about characters. It wasn't exactly. about kung fu or yeah. freaking a spaghetti western. Like, yeah. you need... That's there for... That needs to be the wrapping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then everything exactly. else is kind of like the gooey nougat that is delicious, yeah. you know? You need to see more. And even, like, when they... A lot of people like the relationship with uh, Monica. It's like there needed to have been... They, there should have been more of that. Right. Especially when that kind of like after that first twenty minutes was pretty boom 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 I, here boom. Here we go. Silence and of the Lambs again. Yeah, Jodie Foster had that other female agent that was kind yeah. of her best friend, and they would bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. And I felt like they had more chemistry in the two seconds they were in a movie together mm-hmm. than the what fifteen maybe twenty minutes total of yeah. her and Monica. Yeah, like there I'm like more I, of that. I don't feel anything. Like nothing. I don't want to see a movie like, where she's like just like, along for the ride. She's yeah, like, you should just you should look at which, these two and they should be like, oh, that's a movie I want to see where they're in together. And it's mm-hmm. like no, I'm not really I don't really give a shit. I had no idea that Air Force pilot training also trained you for crease uh, spaceships. Yeah, <laughs> fucking uh, <laughs> well, like, uh, dude, scroll. Sp- I'm like, yo, damn, she knows a don't lot. Don't even get me started on that. Man. <laughs> don't even right, get me real, started for real this time. <laughs> if you have an opinion you want to share, yeah. We want to hear from you guys. We want to hear from you guys. We you won't can... heat it, but we want to hear from you guys. <laughs> you can call our voice number, 904-580-4095. You can leave a, a voicemail. We'll play it on the show. Or you can shoot us an email at theshortboxjacks at gmail.com. We want to hear uh, some opinions out there. All right? So let us know. Uh, I want to move on real quick because um, – and we don't have to spend too much time on this, but Tuesday, uh, legendary um, concept artist Colin Cantwell uh, stopped by the comic shop Coliseum of Jack's Comic Books. Uh, for a meet and greet, uh, he signed autographs. Was selling prints. Uh, was uh, was telling some old stories. Nice. Um, uh, and highlights of his career. I want to thank Jonathan for setting that up. I want to thank yeah. uh, Sierra. Um, was Doll. Hall- Doll. Thank you so much. Um, uh, his handler at the show for helping us uh, get an interview. Um, C actually conducted that interview. Did a really uh, fantastic. Oh, nice. job. Well, it wasn't really an interview. We just had a chance to talk to the man yeah. and basically pick his brain and see. Yeah, uh, that's cool. What he was and. Yeah. What, where he was and how he got into the process yeah. of things. That's and so Sierra awesome. was very, very, very knowledgeable yeah. about all of that. And the mm-hmm. cool thing what was that... What are some that of the things that uh, she could, highlights? I'm sorry. Oh, basically, well, she had, she had mentioned that he was uh, responsible for a lot of the... Some of the music choices in uh, mm-hmm. 2001. Yep. And oh. how like she, he had worked directly with Kubrick on certain things. Yeah, and that's that cool. He, uh, I think he developed the, uh, the Death Star, too. The TIE Fighter, for yep, sure, the and fighters. the X-Wing. Yep. Like, like that's awesome. all that stuff came from this dude's mind, and it's incredible that. And he worked with NASA too. Yeah, which, he worked a little bit with like, NASA. Fuck, yeah, crazy. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a treat just to to talk to this sweet old man. You yeah. know, was, you know, millions of people in Star Wars costumes are like for real. I think it was basically like, kissing his ring. You know, the five the five oh first. <laughs> I think is that uh, the name of the five oh first was there. Yeah, okay, yeah. the Star Wars uh, cosplay group. Um, yeah, man, it, and it just kind of goes to show like really diehard Star Wars fans that know mm-hmm. like names like this you know if 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 like the the design I don't know uh, the designer of one of my favorite movies showed I probably wouldn't know him by name but it was crazy yeah. to see like all of these fans that knew Colin's work oh, so yeah. well and were there to show up and support that's was, like meeting like a Stan Winston or someone right, you know right. like it's just they made your childhood you know <laughs> they, they, they designed, designed they designed a world, you mm-hmm. know, like you talk about world building, like this yeah. dude did that sure. with, with art and, you know, not with a paycheck. Anyway, um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. so I think um, we were able to get some audio and, and video. So we're going to work on uh, a spotlight uh, for Colin. But uh, I just wanted to kind of bring cool. that up. That was some really cool stuff that uh, John kind of helps coordinate when it comes to the comic shop. So shout out to Coliseum of Comics. Um, that is all I had for this first part as far as just the recap. Once again, man, for our listeners out there, we got a live event April 13th of Straight Chillin'. It'll be a focus on uh, the movie and comic adaptation of For Creep Show. And we are lining something up for Avengers Endgame. Per the usual, stay tuned to our social media. Uh, we'll definitely be uh, promoting both of these live shows. Uh, we didn't get a chance to do champion season uh, at the live event. What we did it was a special champion season. Uh, mm-hmm. But I wanted to do a regular one for this here episode. So let's go ahead and jump into our champion season. Champion. 
Champion season for your first time. Tuning in is the segment of the show where we go around the table and highlight a few things in the pop culture, whether it's a movie, comic book, uh, TV series, etc. It's something that we feel, hey, this is really dope and you should check it out. Uh, Ed, how about you lead us off, man? What are you going to champion today? We talked about it a little bit, um, but after a few more episodes in, I'm going to champion Umbrella Academy. Really? I like it a lot. Yeah. How far did you get? I'm about four episodes in. That's about where I'm at. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did you read the... Okay. So that's the thing, because I'm talking with some other people like at work and stuff, that they're kind of like this. I was like, I don't... It's like... And if you have no knowledge of the source material i understand i get it <laughs> i get the confusion i'm not but confused I'm, i just don't find no, it compelling I'm just getting, yeah not but i think if you know the characters and stuff it's like especially if you've read the the graphic novel i know what happens yeah it's it's i really enjoy it i like the like all the stuff that they're keeping in to the book i like the uh i love how they transition the flat to the flashbacks and stuff like that it's 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 one of those books it's like where it's weird because I don't particularly like any of the characters in the in the uh, story, but I like just the how the story is structured, and I like sure. the actual full you know the full story rather than a specific character. I like the uh, I love the um, Hazel and Cha Cha, and I, I like their dynamic. Mary J. Blige is one of the assassins. Which yeah, is I saw awesome. her name in the uh, the credits, and the fact I that when I first saw them, and they just and, but then when they put on the masks. That was like, oh, that's awesome, you know. They're not quite as psychotic as in the as in the book, but that's you know that's kind of a hard thing to translate into to film. But I I really enjoy it. I really enjoy the the uh, the pacing of. It. I know it's 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 a lot of characters to kind of figure out. You know, I I love just I love Klaus. I love like the just the scenes and how they transition into flashbacks. Like just you know, it's it's really seamless. So I think, like I said, it's I'm only kind of, I guess, maybe a third of the way in, but I'm seeing signs of what happens with Vanya. Like, I'm seeing the signs with the medicine and the medication, and, like, it's, she stopped, you know, so I can kind of see, oh, this, they're going to do this. And then the uh, the big, the gorilla body right. for number one, that was like, oh, I can't believe they kept that. <laughs> right. Hmm. And then it's, I think it's like an adaptation for a, for a series, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far, and I'm really you know looking forward to you know finishing the episodes. But it's yeah, that's that's my only champion since the last time. So we, uh, me and C and, uh, and his wife recorded an episode one review. I'll, I'll put out here in the next like week. Mm. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But thanks, thanks for bringing it up today. Yeah. Uh, what about you, C? What do you got a champion? Um, well, speaking of Gerard Way, um, I just finished the first trade of the Invisibles. Uh, ah. you, have you ever read it? I, I gotta look it. at the cover. I know. I haven't. I don't think I've read it's, it. It's uh, it, it's so funny because it's like when you because I was reading the mm-hmm. Umbrella Academy comic. Yeah. And then I read The Invisibles, and I'm like, okay, the difference between fourth rate Grant Morrison mm-hmm. and real Grant Morrison. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really dig Gerard. W- I, I made this comparison, Butter. You mentioned on the uh, the Umbrella Academy thing. Like Gerard Way is like James Cameron, where he is really great at. Mm-hmm getting a bunch of talent together and focusing it in one direction to push a certain uh, mission, you know, like the young animal stuff at DC was fun. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to him writing his own stuff, I think he's massively derivative, like to, to, to a point where it's like, he's like, Grant Morrison, I'll do anything if you, anything you want, <laughs> if you'll like write the forward in my book. Cause I want to, I want to wear your skin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he's like a dumbed down Grant Morrison for sure. Very, very true. Yeah. Um, and, but, but it's not most like people can't handle Grant Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but why though? But why, you know, like I think, I, I think, think Grant that, Morrison writes a terrible Batman. I, I don't think, think he's a good Batman writer. But everything Some people else don't want to be challenged that way when reading fuck, comics. Fuck, man. That's, you, you know what I mean? No, I do, and that's yeah. sad. That yeah. scares me. That means that to the, in their mind, comics isn't a legitimate form of art because they think, well, it's well, uh, uh, you read that heady shit. Like, what are you trying to say? Like, hmm. like what does that mean? Like that that scares me. That genuinely. Anyway, The Invisibles. Yeah. It, Grant Morrison <laughs> uh, wrote this comic as sort of because he's one of those dudes that like he's a practicing chaos magician um <laughs> very yeah yo, british yeah. white dudes no dude here's here, the even wilder yeah. part like 
Grant Morrison and Alan Moore don't like each no. other. Yeah, yeah. So we've got Dick. dueling wizards. Yeah, like they're cut from the same cloth. Yeah, yeah they don't dude. Like each other. Oh my god, it's the totally same like, wizard cloth. The same. You know wizard. what I think it boils down to? It's like like Hogwarts. Think, yes. Like professors. Are yes. At odds. Oh shit! <laughs> like <laughs> Snape and Dumbledore. <laughs> like what? I would say uh, I would say Grant Morrison's Dumbledore just because he's a little more down to earth. Yeah, yeah, I could yeah, talk yeah. with him. Um, yeah. But Invisibles is great. If you haven't read it, these um, Ryan Bolard covers are uh, badass, dude. I, oh, yeah. I highly, I highly suggest you watch the Philip K. Dick press. Uh, press. It was like a media press outlet where he starts talking about what the nature of reality is. Have you seen this? I haven't seen that yet, dude. It is. He like basically He's is crazy. like yeah. He but he lays it out, and it, you almost like wonder if the Wachowskis were in the audience going, <laughs> uh, "Thank you, yes, check, check, <laughs> sure. check. We're doing that." Also, the Wachowskis ripped off the Invisibles. Hard. Interesting. Like okay. this, this book came out in '94, I want to say, mm-hmm. and it's essentially everything Philip K. Dick said in that. But Grant Morrison didn't pilfer it because, haha, this will make a good comic. He did it because he genuinely believes in it. Yeah. Like it's like, yes, there are extra dimensional beings. In you read the, the filth. Uh, so I'm waiting <laughs> because. <laughs> I heard Buckle it, up. It, well, I heard it, it ties into the Invisibles. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read the Invisibles first, and then I'm gonna read the Filth, yeah. and then now I can shit on anyone else who hasn't read those things. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you are so fucking stupid. <laughs> I get shit on the, yeah, elite. That is, the that comic is, elite. That is, that is C's mo right there. That is good. <laughs> You haven't read the Invisibles? You, said, like, you know what though? Shit on you know what? Everybody. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think I'd want to? Uh, if I had my choice, <laughs> would I rather read Fatal Attractions again mm. or the Invisibles? Mm. I honestly, it would be easy for me to be like, oh, definitely Fatal Attractions again, or uh, Kurt Busiek's Marvels. Yes, that's a freaking great comic, just because it doesn't cost me any time or effort or mm. brain power yeah. on my part to get into it. Like, the Invisibles forces you to be like. All right. Well, I'm dropping all these weird references, and if you don't get them, then I guess this book isn't for you. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm I not stupid. Yeah. I'm the little, I'm the little boy from the never ending story. Yeah, he doesn't cater. He is like, you better, yeah, hold, hang reason. on, or you're gonna get lost. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a big reason why I couldn't get into his Batman's because I was like, yo, are you? He yeah, I'm, I'm pulls good. up some I'm really his Superman is great. Stuff. His uh, Swamp Thing is great. Is, like, yeah, All Star is fun read. It's like almost oh, All Star is yeah. the shit. Yeah, almost yeah. everything Grant Morrison writes is amazing, except his Batman. I too, I don't know why. Too, There's a know. weird. He pulls from very strange sources yeah. for his Batman stuff. Yeah. Uh, see, was that the end of yours? Yeah. Oh yeah, Invisibles. Uh, so the first thing I'm a champion is. I finally read uh, the Shivers book after you and uh, Ed it's both. Not <laughs> it's not enough. After you and Ed What's both like corner? he moved it. Uh, I didn't. Say, I just told you to move it so C wouldn't get mad. <laughs> I did. Well, amongst wiping the dust off the cover of that book, I said, "Well, you know, I still got some time for you guys to come over. Let me. It's a nice day out." And this is complete ass backwards, but per the usual bottle way. It's a nice day out. Let me go grab this book, read it for my coffee. How the fuck? <laughs> Is a book so scary that it gave like I was like I don't want to be outside anymore. Like it's I, in the daylight. Like, yes, I don't I'm, wanna... like, I'm sitting on my front porch enjoying a gorgeous <laughs> Florida day with a coffee, and I, I read. Uh, I've only read two short stories. I read the record and then Shiver, mm. and I said, "Well, that's it for today. I'm going <laughs> I have to close that book." He's um, yeah. You kind of have to read him in chunks. It's hard to do go through a full. Book. All right, so, I love. I read the whole thing. Yeah, like, the and, whole and, thing. And maybe I didn't. It's uh, Junji Ito's. Um, it's a, it's it's a collection, right? Yeah, it's an uh, anthology. Mm-hmm. anthology. It's called Shiver. It collects, I guess, nine of his uh, handpicked stories that he chose. Yeah, he's got another one dropping in April. Ooh. So immediately, you know what it reminded me of? It gave me the same feeling I used to get when I used to watch on uh, Adult Swim, Paranoia Agent. Yeah. Oh. Uh, of that kid with that fucking freaky golden bat. Yeah. Scary oh, okay. ass bastard. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Like little, little slugger, you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Like. The record, that first um, short story, I was like, okay, burn all my vinyls, got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just started collecting, yeah. son of a... And then, <laughs> Come on. And then I read the second book, Shivero, so the, the name story, and it reminded me of, you know, when on Facebook and everyone was posting like those like fear of holes like mm-hmm. pictures? Yeah. Uh, it was like that times 20. That oh, shit yeah. was wild. Um, I don't know what it is, and it's like... The common theme seems to be like just greed and like you know uh, fascination over like 
clearly things you should not like you know uh, obsess, obsess over. over. Yeah, it's like exactly. you fucking idiots, just throw away the goddamn jade. He takes <laughs> break the record. <laughs> like yeah. you just saw your homeboy die. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> So it it was it was a good really remake. good um, tracks on this though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, like, yeah. And you know, I, you know what else I dig about yeah. manga artists? Uh, what I really liked about their book, was, I would like you to start saying what you dig about comic book artists. Okay, because I feel, like oh. in your, well, I feel specific. like I feel like I think I'm not, I'm not, those I'm Japanese. Like, let me yeah. tell you what I like about them. Yeah, it's like not World War II <laughs> fodder. You know, like okay, what I respect <laughs> from a Japanese here. comic book artist uh, <laughs> is his excerpts at the end. They're like only a paragraph. Hey, here's why I wrote it. Here, here's some backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, and I I know, you know. American comic artists do that as well. Usually towards the end of their book, they have a little excerpt. But yeah. I don't find it nearly as fascinating as sometimes how manga does it. Because the artists themselves both do the story and art, but they also are like reclusive. You know? mm-hmm. So whenever they say something about a story, it's, yeah. I'm like, well, this has got to be a big deal. If he's like, hey, you know, this is one of my favorites. Here's what I thought. Like, here's some background. You, um, you feel like you know the dudes. Yeah. But the thing is, is that if you, you were ever to meet shit. them, you'd just be, they'd just be like these little introverted dudes Yo, that like don't want to talk he to was like, like a dentist before oh my god it makes yeah. so much sense yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a teeth story in there. all i think of is the steve martin you, and uh to be little, shop of, <laughs> little be shop of horrors dentist. so I'll, I'll champion that first and then the, awesome. the the second thing i'll champion is um i had an opportunity to go to uh the retro jacks con um, oh. oh yeah uh it's today's retro or this whole weekend darby was Jax. asking about if we were going i said that you might be going i, I and I'm not sure. I think she was busy when I walked by her table. Yeah. Um, so I had a chance to go yesterday. Uh, it's a today or this year was the first time that Retrorama Collectibles and Jax Arcade Expo combined forces to do this uh, three day convention. The main focus of it being retro and vintage uh, toys, gaming, arcades, and pinballs. And we, mm-hmm. when I had them on the show, they mentioned, "Hey, uh, we reached out to the pinball arcade community." There's a bunch of people donating games. It's going to be mm-hmm. free to play for your ticket. Yeah, that's cool. I, and I told them when I saw uh, both of them um, at the event, the organizers, um, you guys vastly undersold this event because it mm-hmm. was so much more. When I say mm-hmm. it was like wall to wall, like as far as the eyes can see, like arcades and pinball machines, and the fact they were all free to play was wild. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it was like 20 bucks for a, a one-day ticket, um, plenty of games to choose from it was like just a whole space it took place in the morocco shrine which by the way has nothing to do with morocco i, I walked I in there no. like we don't got alligators of no. fucking pyramids what is this we don't wear fez hats yeah and um, those little cars but man it, it was awesome and they had like a, a a dedicated toy section so there's a bunch of vendors of like selling toys uh like vintage toys newer toys pops funkos all that stuff it was a dope event and um i'm definitely excited for it next year maybe we'll do something a little mm. more but uh I, I, I recommend it man you Retro reminded Jackson. me of the thing about not being about morocco i saw <laughs> morrissey there of all people Ew. years ago what really at yeah. Morocco Shrine, he was looking around, not happy. He actually played a set. He didn't show like a factory, like mutilation video. And leave. there we go. There <laughs> he we actually go. played a set, and it was good. He was, he was good. I'm just but, saying. Um, he said like Morocco Shrine Auditorium in Jacksonville, Florida. I wonder if there's a Jacksonville, Florida Shrine Auditorium in Morocco. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> uh, Morrissey, don't you he's go changing. So, oh, he's awesome. He was damn. Uh, well, I mean, I'll be. I was telling uh, Ryan the other day. I've never been to the Morocco Shrine. As long mm-hmm. as I've lived in Jacks, I've always been made fun of for you know <laughs> when Is I tell people. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, oh, you, you, go to your home, you never had a. You never had to look for a job or go to the job fair, man. Man, yeah, beer festivals. I don't. I just. I've never made it. Out I've there. always lived in a lap of luxury, guys. I've <laughs> yeah. never had to struggle. Yo, don't don't ruin my answer. <laughs> um, so when I went there, I was like, Yo, none of this shit looks like rug. What? My mom would burn this place down. They have the curved sword with the star. Yeah, a little scimitar. Scimitar. And... That's kind of. And and man, I don't got one of them. I was like, what? <laughs> well, Anyways, you're lost, Bonner. Anyway, yeah, he for right. sure has Truly a curved sword at the house. Truly my loss. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's, like, that's how my mom greets you, juggling both of those swords. No, it's your dad's, though. It's uh, your dad's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll champion that. Like I said, Junji Into uh, Shiver, um, nice. as well as Retro Jacks Con Weekend. Shout out to awesome. those guys. Um, that's all we got for you guys uh, this week, Short Boxes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you once again to uh, Tim and the Sunray team, as well as everyone that showed up for the Captain Marvel movie and podcast yes, event this past Thursday. Shout out to Colin Cantwell. We'll have um, that spotlight video and then audio uh, real soon. Um, 
for all of you uh, podcasters, fellow podcasters that listen to the show or just people interested in the podcast scene here in Jax, we are hosting uh, another podcaster meetup. It'll be this Tuesday, so March 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Spliff's Gastro Pub. That's downtown. It's right next to 1904. Uh, so come on out. Learn more about the, um, uh, the Jacksonville podcast scene. Uh, maybe be motivated to start your own, or if you've got questions for us, uh, we'll definitely be taking those. Uh, and once again, stay uh, tuned to our social media pages, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that good stuff. We'll be posting uh, more information for both of the live events uh, April 13th and the 25th for the Avengers Endgame, as well as our collaboration with Straight Chilling Crew. Uh, stay tuned to that. And per the usual, if you are not subscribed to the show, uh, go on your favorite podcast listening uh, app, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Spotify. Uh, there's a tons of them out there. Just search the Shorebox Podcast. Hit that subscribe button. And more importantly, word of mouth. If you had a favorite nerd in your life, tell them about the show. Tell them to subscribe. Tell them to come out to the live events. Let us meet them. Um, and yeah, we'll go ahead and call that a day. We'll catch you guys in a week. Uh, yeah, peace. Yo, what happened to peace? Peace, 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 peace. peace.